Hello friends, after an interesting discussion on carbon footprint as to what is the carbon footprint and then on what are carbon taxes, we would move on to an interesting concept which is known as carbon trading. This would be an interesting discussion to understand the challenge of climate change and the way all the countries, the developed as well as the developing countries are gearing towards mitigating this climate change issue. So what are the concepts of carbon trading? And more specifically, what are the two options, namely the cap and trade option and the carbon offsets that would be introduced in this lecture. Okay, so welcome dear friends and let us begin with this interesting session. Okay. So this term carbon trading as the name indicates, has something to do with the trade, something to do with uh, the import and export. Okay, And there are basically two uh, concepts in this, which we'll be discussing today. One is called as the emissions trading. Now, there is another term for emissions trading, which is namely the cap and trade option. Okay, So both the things, that is the cap and trade option, as well as emission trading would mean the same. Uh, the second term you we'll come across when we read the literature, there's plenty of literature on carbon trading is on carbon offsets. So we will try to clear our concepts as to what they mean uh, so that those who are interested really into this issue, concerned about the climate change, they would go deeper and deeper into it. Okay. So what is this emissions trading? Uh, as I said, uh, there are two terms used interchangeably. One is known as the cap and trade and other is known as the emission trade. So the concept is, the idea is that it is, uh, we need to use the market. The okay, market is a place where we trade. Okay? So we need to use the market, market-based approach uh, to control the pollution. Uh, and uh, what is this market-based approach and how is it different from command and control approach? So one way of reducing emission is we just tell the industries that, okay, so you cannot emit so and so. You cannot emit uh, CO2 beyond this limit. You cannot emit carbon monoxide beyond this limit. Okay. You cannot emit the other greenhouse gases beyond a burden. So this is called as a quota based approach. Or this is a command and control approach where the government is directly telling the industry not to pollute beyond a burden, a particular uh, limit. Okay. Uh, there is other way of doing it and which is uh, advocated by some people, uh, which is known as a market based approach. And this emissions trading is a market based approach. Where, uh, where economic incentives uh, could be given, okay, or carrot and stick approach could be used for reducing the emissions of pollutants, but this carrot and stick approach is basically the market instrument, okay. So we would look into what is cap and what is trading in this cap and trading scheme. So this cap and trading scheme, uh, as I said, is adopted in number of countries, uh, but the most uh, experience, the vast experience of this scheme comes from Europe. Okay. So when you study cap and trading scheme, we need to study essentially uh, the schemes which are which are formulated by governments as well as the schemes which are formulated by intergovernmental bodies like the European Union. Okay. So under the scheme called as cap and trade, as I said, governments so both the governments as well as the group of governments, intergovernmental bodies like European Union, they hand out license uh, which are known as carbon permits. Uh, so the critics would say that these carbon permits are, uh, permits are the license to pollute. Okay, Whereas the people uh, who are in favor of this market-based instrument, they would say that these are the permits which would put a limit, put a limit or cap on the carbon emissions. Okay? So uh, as I said, this cap and trade uh, can be formulated okay, by both the independent governments as well as a group of governments or intergovernmental bodies like European Union. And, and we would be discussing that European Union uh, emission trading scheme is one of the most widely applied cap and trade scheme. Uh, so there are two words. One is cap and other is the trade. So cap and trade. Uh, what is the cap? So the cap part Cap part, cap means limit. Okay. So cap part is supposed to do the work uh, in, the, in the environmental sense. Uh, it 
sets up a legal limit on the levels of permissible pollution and it puts a time frame to it. So, cap part is supposed to be like a quota. Okay? It puts a limit, a legal limit, and, uh, beyond which the industries cannot uh, pollute. Okay? And this legal limit has to be added to within a stipulated time. So, that is uh, what is the cap part. So, each cap reduction uh, is in effect a new regulatory measure which is introduced by governments or as I said, some international bodies to restrict the pollution further. So, this is the limit cap essentially has to be in, uh, in one sentence if you want to understand what is cap, it is a legal limit which is or a legal permissible limit given to the industries okay? and it is set by the governments or intergovernmental bodies. And the idea is that uh, this caps, this limits would be gradually lowered. It means that they would be more, made more stringent uh, and because they would be more, made more stringent, then uh, the industries would ultimately uh, be going green. Okay. So, the idea of the cap is that these limits are gradually lowered. Though uh, uh, the critics say that there is no clear timetable set for this cap and hence uh, it in a way is misleading. But uh, conceptually level, uh, conceptual level, the idea is that these limits are gradually lowered so that the norms become more stringent for the polluting industries. And once these caps are set, uh, then each national government has to come up with a plan which may or may not be mandatory. Uh, but in real life, it is not mandatory, but it is a plan. Okay, so what is that plan called as? Uh, to adhere to the cap, there comes a national allo allocation plan beyond which we cannot so, the next and most important step of the process of CAP is for each country to agree on a national allocation plan. So, what is this national allocation plan? It gives you a target. Okay? It sets a target, allocates the targets for all the individual industries, uh, especially the polluting industries like power plants and some factories and industrial sites. Okay? So, uh, this plans when they allocate the targets beyond which the industries cannot pollute uh, for the combined individual power plants, factories and other industries sites, that would add up to an overall cap for heavy pollutants in each industry. So, this plan has to be added to by each country, okay, so that the overall cap which is put on the heavy pollutants in each country is adhered to. So, following the cap, there is a NAP. So, NAP is the national allocation plan. Uh, the expectation as I said is the combined effect of cap and nap is that uh, it would become more stringent with time and industries will ultimately go free. And the entire logic behind this cap and nap is the, that uh, price signals would ultimately reduce the pollution. So, if uh, for example, petroleum is made costly, people would consume less petroleum uh, and they would go to greener fuels like biodiesel, okay, like this, uh, or ethanol, like this. So, this is the logic that if you make the fossil fuel industries, uh, the output of the fossil fuel industries more uh, costly, but uh, then uh, people would move to uh, uh, more cleaner options. Okay, so, uh, and this cap thing is uh, if you make it more stringent, then the industries would go green. So, this is the faith in the price signals. Uh, the other part, as we said, one is cap and trade. So, emissions trading is basically not simply about cap. It also includes trade and trading is the most important aspect of this cap and trade regime. So, what is this trade? What can be bought and what can be sold? So, it is basically the carbon permits and uh, as I said, so it is basically in layman's language, pollutions. Okay, so pollution can be, uh, the quota of the pollution can be bought and sold. The carbon permits can be bought and can be sold. It means that the carbon permits can be traded. So, a participant industry can choose either to use its permits exactly, it means there will be a permits given to him. Uh, that industry can use its permits exactly uh, by reducing its own emissions, right, and adhering to the uh, carbon permits so that there, there is no need of trading it, trading the carbon permits. But if, uh, if they uh, overdo it, it means if the pollution is more than the, what the carbon permits uh, allow them, then uh, if they emit less than it permits and then they can sell the permit and if they emit more 
then they can buy the permit from other countries. So in a way, if the industry is not able to adhere to uh, a particular carbon uh, level, uh, emission level, they need to pay more. Okay. So as I said, it's basically price signal which is going to control the pollution. So if, if I am an industry and if I am polluting more, then I need to pay the other industry which is paying uh, polluting less and uh, in a way offset my emissions okay so this is the idea so idea is of trading this uh, a polluting industry has an option either to reduce its pollution okay or pay more money okay uh, to the less polluting industries so that in in total the cap the cap which is put uh, is adhered to so this is the idea so that is uh, the trading part of the cap and trade uh, aspect as i said the most popular ETS scheme, emission trading scheme is that uh, by the intergovernmental body, which is the European Union. So in an effort to ensure collective compliance with the Kyoto Protocol, which you know was a protocol agreed uh, by the uh, parties okay, to add a particular limit, uh, all the European Union member states, they created their own cap and trade emission reduction system. And that is known as the European Union emission trading scheme and it all started in 2003 okay so those who want to study cap and trade in detail they need to study this european union emission trading scheme as to whether it has succeeded or not in uh, reducing the climate change uh, issue okay uh, why is that so because it's the largest world largest carbon trading scheme and, and the longest established cap and trade carbon market so Historically, also used since 2003, it is in existence. So, it is the longest established cap and trade carbon market, and it is also the world largest carbon trading scheme because it covers a lot many countries of the European Union. Okay, and therefore, it also serves as a model for similar cap and trading schemes that are being proposed in uh, the different countries uh, like uh, United States of America, Australia, and so on. Okay. So, those who want to uh, uh, talk in favor or against the carbon trading scheme, they need to look at this specific uh, European Union emission trading scheme to understand it better. Uh, the other part of carbon trading is uh, what is known as a carbon offset. Okay. So, this is the second type of carbon trading and what is this carbon offset? So, instead of cutting the emissions at the source okay uh, means uh, if i i am in america and uh, i have been given a particular cap okay and I, I i am not able to reduce the emissions at my place so instead of cutting emissions at source the companies and the, sometimes the international financial institutes governments and individuals they would finance the emission saving projects outside the cap area means for example let us take uh, two set of countries. One is the countries of the north, which, is, which are considered to be developed countries, more industrialized countries, and other is a set of uh, the developing world, which is called as the southern countries. Okay, so southern countries, uh, they because they are less industrialized, they would pollute less. Whereas the northern countries, because they are more industrialized, they would uh, uh, emit more. So uh, what the scheme is that the northern countries would give some money to the uh, southern countries, the developing countries, uh, so as to finance some renewables okay, or some projects which are considered to be green. Okay, and in a way, they would not reduce their own emissions. Uh, they would not uh, reduce the emissions uh, uh, quota. Okay, instead, they would just put money, uh, uh, give money to the developing world, the, the governments, and help uh, help them adopt greener practices. Okay, so this is as offsetting so instead of reducing your own emission you are offsetting that carbon emissions okay and to a developing world right so this emission saving projects are to be given to the areas which are outside the capital area which are the capital area capital area are the let us see european union united states of america australia etc and which are the non capital area the developing world like say india or etc so the overall goal of emission trading, both the carbon offset as well as uh, the ETS okay, emission trading scheme, as you see, is uh, is that the polluters would look into the 
cost aspect. So the focus of this is they would more concentrate on the cost aspect and they would try to minimize the cost of meeting uh, the emission target. So this is one of the critic of the scheme that it is all related to money. Instead of looking at the emission per se, it is just looking at the cost aspect for meeting the emissions target. Okay. Uh, so the carbon savings are calculated according to how much less greenhouse gases is presumed to be entering the atmosphere than would have been in the case in the absence of projects. Now, suppose uh, I want a developed country wants to give money to the developing country. So the developing country has to write a report saying that uh, this particular industry is, if it was operated on fossil fuel, it would emit so much of carbon dioxide. And now because it's operated on some greener fuel, now it would emit so much less. Okay. So how much are the carbon savings? So this way, uh, we can calculate the carbon savings. And then this way, the funds would be allotted in what is called as a uh, clean development mechanism. So clean development mechanism was, was such idea. But uh, unfortunately, uh, that has earned a bad name for achieving, for failing to achieve the carbon offsets. So uh, the idea, theoretical idea was that, as I said, the developing world would write purposes and it would uh, welcome money from the developed world and set up greener industries. Okay, But the critic is that many people, many uh, industries came up in the developing world, but in practice, they, they simply took up the money, but there was no real uh, reduction in the carbon emissions. Okay, So, as we were saying, that rich countries, uh, uh, should be allowed to buy their cuts from other countries. Okay, And uh, that critic, uh, as I said, the critic is that there will be fake emission cuts. Okay? Uh, the system does not set a deadline by which the fossil fuel use will be phased up. Okay? Instead, it starts by translating the existing pollution into a tradable commodity. So the entire uh, critic of uh, both this uh, uh, emission trading as well as the carbon offsets is that this system okay uh, it does not put a deadline by which the fossil fuel use will be completely phased out uh, instead uh, it starts by translating the existing pollution into a tradable commodity and some people object to it that uh, we cannot uh, put this carbon emissions into a tradable community uh, and uh, we cannot hand over this uh, serious issue of carbon emissions uh, to the market. Okay. So there are some people who advocate the uh, command and control approach instead of uh, these two market based approaches, namely the um, uh, emission scheme right, and the carbon offsets. Okay. So if we want to uh, take a position as to what is better, whether carbon taxes are better, whether emission trading scheme is better, whether uh, this carbon offsets like clean development mechanisms are better. Okay, we need to read a vast body of literature which is available before making up uh, our case for or against this schemes. Okay, uh, so this uh, entire course was uh, formulated. This lecture was uh, basically uh, to be a introductory lecture to introduce to you uh, this uh, very hot and debatable aspects, namely carbon footprint, carbon trading, and emission trading. Okay, And we, as the student who are concerned about the climate change, we should uh, study in depth with this introduction, all these issues. Uh, plenty of literature is available on the net. And I feel that as students who are interested really in a greener climate, all these issues should be of concern. It's not simply of academic concern, but as the citizens of the responsible world, we should be concerned about all these issues. Okay. I hope that this introductory uh, the videos which I have made on this course uh, would generate interest in you. Okay, and we will do more serious discussion on this in the forthcoming videos. Bye for now.